Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Nehmetullahi ta'ala ve nasafir eşhedü en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Eşhedü enne seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve azvacihi ve ashabı tabi kulefayn rahşin bahadir min ba'di. Ve zirmeti ala al-tahkik, ve zirmihnum ala al-miti kulefayn rasulü ala al-tahkik. Umar al-mu'minin, Hazreti Ebu Bakr, Umar Usman ve Ali. Ve ala bahi sahabı tabi rivan ta'alayhim ecmain. Ya yuhal mu'minul hazirun. İttakum ve ta'in, inna Allahum el-lezine tekvel el-lezine hum muhsinun. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrafil amca nursalin. Sayyidina Mevlana Muhammedin. Ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the universes. All praises are due to Allah who says, in Surat Al-Araf, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And remember your Lord within yourself, humbly and with awe, below your breath, in the mornings and the evenings. And do not be from the heedless, Truly those who are with your Lord are not too proud to do him service, but they praise him and make sajda to him. Sadaqallah al-Azim. May all peace and blessings be upon the Imam of the Messengers, Sayyidina, Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad Mustafa wasalam. We're asking salawats from the Dalil Sharif saying, Ya Allah, Bless our Master Muhammad and his wives and descendants and all the prophets and messengers and closest angels and all the servants of Allah in all the rainfall that has rained since the sky was formed. And bless our Master Muhammad in everything the earth has produced since it was spread out. And bless our Master Muhammad as many times as there are stars in the sky and you alone are the one who counts them. And bless our Master Muhammad wasalam, in every breath of every soul from the moment you created them. And bless our Master Muhammad wasalam, in everything you have already created and in what you will create and in whatever is encompassed by your knowledge and then double all of them. Amen. May peace and blessings also be upon his blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Osman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. May peace and blessings be upon the noble Mashaykh of this Naqshbandi path. May peace and blessings be upon the Ottoman Sultans, the protectors of the innocent. May Allah love those who love them. May Allah curse those who hate them. May Allah return their rights to them soon. Amin. Ya Rabbi, for the sake of your Habib, for the sake of the Ahlul Bayt, for the sake of the Sahabe Kiram, for the sake of this holy month, help the believers, Ya Rabbi. Send them support. End the tyranny. Help the innocent ones who are undergoing genocide and destruction. Send them a Sultan. Send them a Khalifa. Ya Rabbi, send Hazrat Mahdi alayhi salam. Amin. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun, O believers, in front of each and every one of us, is a reality that nobody has ever escaped. It is a reality that every soul that has been created will go through. It is a reality that makes no exception for rich or poor, young or old, guilty or innocent. And yet, all of mankind is running every day to ignore that reality and pretend it is not going to happen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Every soul will taste death. You will be paid your wages in full on the day of rising, anyone who is distanced from the fire and admitted to the garden has triumphed. The life of this world is only the enjoyment of delusion. Sadaqallah al Death is chasing each and every one of us. And one of the first realities that the shaykhs wake the murids up is to that of death. No. Remembrance of death, it is not depressing. Today, that is another way they are fooling people to get tricked by dunya. The people who are depressed nowadays are the ones who have no connection 
to the reality of life or to the reality of death and what comes after death. They live their life on computers and phones. And the word itself, virtual reality, meaning it's fake reality. They're living their lives in fakeness and they don't even look around them to see what is there. They don't see the beauty in the nature that Allah has created. They don't look at those people who are in sickness or suffering so they themselves can give shukr. And they don't look at the death in front of them to understand the value of the life that they have. Yes, life has value. Yes, life is precious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created it precious. Anything that Allah has created is precious. But how precious is life? Our life. Sahih al Saif is saying, the life has a value. What Allah has given, what Allah has granted to me is very valuable. Let me hold on tightly to that. When you're holding on to that life, then you'll be looking and saying, well, this life is going, is going to go away from my hand too after a while. What am I going to do? Then you'll be able to concentrate on what is waiting for you on the other side. Otherwise, the majority is running away and they don't even want to think about death anymore. They don't want to be around those who are going to remind them about death. They run away. They find it easier. They think that it's easier saying, let me run away from this one and my life is going to become better and easy because this one is reminding me all the time that I'm going to die. So let me just go far away. They go far away. And if they had one problem, then their problems become double. Now that they are not close to someone who is close to Allah, that little peace in their hearts is taken away. You may give them the whole world, but they are not going to be satisfied by it. Sahib al Saif speaks the truth. Those who don't remember death are in suffering. We must remember it. And death is there every day. Every moment, people are dying. And when you see them, you see how they are clinging and grabbing onto the breaths because of the value of this life. What distinguishes the living from the dead? What is the difference between them? It is that breath of life. That breath that Shaykh Effendi always reminded us about. That breath which in this tariqat we must always Guard. Yes, people say big Sufi words, Hosh Dar Dam, but what is the reality of that? Sultan al Awliya, Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adel Haqqani, Qadis Lasir is saying, yes, this is also our life. Counted days or months or years, it is going to finish. Every breath takes us towards the day of judgment, towards eternal life. Keep your breaths for your Lord, Allah Almighty, and say Allah, Allah. Even if you do not say it by your will, still your breath each time says who, who, who, who, who, who, who. This is going on. Who with each breath, whether you like it to say it or not. Sultan al speaks the truth. So whether you like it or not, that breath, our breath, everyone's breath, is making a zikr. But consciously, with our mind, with our will, are we remembering Allah? Is our work and our actions, the hizmat, which is the physical expression of our faith, are we doing that? Or are we living for nothing? Imam Rabbani Qadazasir is giving sharp words in Maktubat Sharif saying, Your desires are actually your Lord. What are your desires? And who is your Lord? If you don't have an aim and passion in it to achieve, if you don't have an aim and passion in it to achieve, then you are dead and just breathing meaninglessly. Most highest of the highest aim is to realize the oneness of the Zat of Allah, 
subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is actually to be earned by following his shariat, which is revealed by the Holy Prophet, alayhi salatu Breathing meaninglessly. To breathe meaninglessly is one of the worst things. As Sultan Bahu, Qaddas al is saying, the breath of Ghaflat is kufur. My murshid taught me this. When we learned this, we were awake with zikr. All the we died before death and achieved our goal. Who has the real breath of life and who can teach it? Only the awliya Allah, only the mashayikhs. Remember the story of Hazrat Yunus Emre, that when he was young, he came to the dergah of Haji Bektashi Veli to, help, to get help for himself and his village, who were under famine. And Haji Bektashi Veli asked him, shall we give you nefes, which is breath, or wheat? Hazrat Yunus Emre first asked for wheat. But then he realized his mistake and came back and begged for nefes, for breath. Hajib Ektashivali told him, now the key to that is not with me. It is with Taptuk Emre. And when he reached Taptuk Emre, what did he say to Hazrat Yunus Emre? He says, we know your situation, make hizmet and work hard. That was the key to him getting the nefes. Who has your key? Who has the key to that real breath? Who has the key to make us to realize that our life is coming in and out with who, who, who? And what will happen? Hasha astaghfirullah. If you leave the one who has that key, what kind of breath will you take? The breath of Ghaflat is kufur. My murshid taught me this. That is word of haq from Sultan Abahu. May Allah protect us. So our Shaykh is teaching us what that breath is and how to use that breath. Sahib al Saif, our Shaykh, yours and mine is saying, there is an angel who is responsible for your breath of life. He is giving you warning. You have this much breath of life left. Are you hearing every day? Goflet, heedlessness. No hearing because blind. Those eyes are blind. So if you are blind in dunya, then you will be blind in ahirat. 6,666 ayats have been sent to mankind, not to animals, to make man to wake up from that heedless station, to make man aware to understand why he is living, to make man know why he is living, to understand what he is doing and why he is doing. If you are not knowing that, then what kind of Qur'an reading is this? You are giving shahadat and then he tells you to make five times prayers. Five times prayer, you have to stand there to pray five times. Five times daily, you have to force yourself to wake up again to understand, I am living for Allah and I am preparing to go to Allah. As the Holy Prophet is saying, every prayer that you are praying, you must pray it like you are never going to reach to the next prayer. Is that what you are doing? Is that what we are doing? The Muslims, is that what they are doing? If you do that, then you cannot be in that kaflat station. You cannot be running after this dunya that is not going to give you any value. You cannot be spending time, your breath of life, with nonsense, with malayani, with slandering, with ribat. You cannot. It's impossible. The life is short. Short 
short. And before accomplishing your mission, you may find that Azrael is standing in front of you. Leave everything else. Advice to you and to me. Leave everything else. Be busy with yourself. Do a favor to yourself. Be busy with yourself. Fix yourself before Azrael comes. The tricks and traps of this dunya, if you're busy with this dunya, then you are not accepting Shaykh then you are not accepting the Prophet ﷺ. Then you are not accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are just accepting your ego. You are saying something but living some other lifestyle. This is not what Allah wants from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 124,000 prophets. He sent books. He sent so many awliyas to us to teach us how to live. How to keep ourselves on the sirat al-mustaqim and to go out from this world that way. If we keep that, we will be the winner. If not, there are two doors coming out from this dunya, either the door of rahmat, mercy, or the door of curses. If you don't know how to live, if you don't stand on the Sirat al-Mustaqim, you cannot be reaching to the door of rahmat because you're choosing another door. Dunya road is leading people to the door of curse. Sahib al he speaks the truth. O oh, believers, this is Tariqat. Tariqat means way. Shaykh Afandi is our guide. In front of him are 40 grand sheikhs. We are not the first to walk on this path. We may be the worst to have walked on this path. And in front of us are the footsteps of the ones who are beloved to Allah, whose names are recited by the angels, the ashks, the ashiks, and the rijal of Allah. This life that we have been granted is beautiful because we are on this way. Don't leave the road. Hazrat Yunus Emre learned the value of that nefes, that breath. And he's speaking to us, reminding us to stay on the way and what is at the end. May we take guidance from his words. The drink sent down from truth, we drank it, alhamdulillah. And we sailed over the ocean of power, alhamdulillah. Beyond those hills and oak woods, beyond those vineyards and gardens, we passed in health and joy, alhamdulillah. We were dry, but we moistened. We grew wings and became birds. We married one another and flew, alhamdulillah. To whatever lands we came, in whatever hearts, in all humanity, we planted the meanings that Baba Tabtuk taught us. Alhamdulillah. Come here. Let's make peace. Let's not be strangers to one another. We have saddled the horse and trained it. Alhamdulillah. We became a trickle that grew into a river. We took flight and drove into the sea. And then we overflowed. Alhamdulillah. We became servants at Taptuk's door. Poor Yunus raw and tasteless, finally got cooked. Alhamdulillah. Shukur ya Rabbi. Alhamdulillah. Shukur ya Rabbi, alhamdulillah. Shukur ya Rabbi, alhamdulillah.